a couple, Sarah and Michael, had been longing for a weekend getaway, a chance to reconnect with nature. They decided to go camping deep in the wilderness during the rainy season, despite warnings from locals about eerie happenings in those woods. They brushed off the stories as folklore and set out on their adventure. The first night, the rain fell lightly as they gathered firewood, and in the distance, they heard faint howling. It was far away and barely noticeable, so they paid it no mind. Each night, though, the howling grew louder, closer, and more unnerving. Michael assured Sarah it was just wolves, but deep down, even he felt something was wrong. By the third night, the howls had become deafening, almost vibrating through the air. Sarah was starting to get worried, but Michael remained stubborn. I'll get more firewood, and then we'll settle in for the night, he said. Michael set out into the dark, misty forest, his breath visible in the cold, damp air. His flashlight flickered as the rain began to fall harder, turning the dirt path into thick mud. He pushed through the dense undergrowth, the sound of snapping twigs echoing with each step. The distant howling that had haunted them for days was back, but now it was louder, sharper. It seemed to be following him, growing closer with every second. Trying to ignore the unease creeping up his spine, Michael swung his axe into the nearest log, splitting it cleanly in two. Just wolves, he muttered to himself, nothing to worry about. But the howls were unlike anything he'd ever heard. They didn't sound like any ordinary wolves. There was a guttural, almost human-like scream to them, and they seemed to be echoing from all directions, closing in on him. He gathered the wood into his arms, but just as he turned to head back to the cabin, a long, piercing howl echoed through the trees, freezing him in place. This time, it was different, too close. His heart began to race as the forest around him fell deathly silent, as if every creature knew something was coming. The rain picked up, pounding against the leaves, and Michael quickened his pace. His boots squelched in the mud, his flashlight barely cutting through the thickening mist. His breath came faster, the eerie silence broken only by his own footsteps and the occasional crack of a branch in the distance. Then, from the corner of his eye, he saw movement, something large, hulking, creeping through the trees. His pulse spiked. He whipped around, shining his flashlight into the darkness. For a moment, there was nothing, only the rain and the oppressive darkness. But then, between the trunks of the trees, he saw them, two glowing eyes, burning like embers, staring directly at him. A low, guttural growl rumbled through the air. The wolf, no, the beast, stepped into the beam of his flashlight, and Michael's blood ran cold. This was no ordinary animal. It stood nearly twice as tall as any wolf he'd ever seen, its massive body covered in slick, matted fur. Its teeth were jagged and dripping, and its eyes seemed to glow with an unnatural hunger. Michael backed up slowly, dropping the firewood, his breath shallow. Every instinct screamed at him to run, but he couldn't move, paralyzed by the creature's sheer size and the terrifying realization that it had been watching him all along. The wolf bared its fangs and lunged. Michael raised his axe, swinging wildly as the beast collided with him. The force knocked him off his feet, his back slamming into a tree. The axe connected, but the wolf didn't even flinch. It snapped its jaws at him, narrowly missing his face as he scrambled to his feet, slipping in the mud. Panic surged through him. He ran, crashing through the underbrush, branches tearing at his clothes as he fought to escape. But the wolf was faster, much faster. He could hear its heavy paws pounding the ground behind him, its growls growing louder, closer. His lungs burned as he ran harder than he ever thought possible. Suddenly he tripped, crashing face first into the mud. He turned just in time to see the beast towering over him, its glowing eyes the last thing he saw before it leapt onto him, its jaws clamping down with a sickening crunch. A scream tore through the night, but it was cut short. The forest was silent again except for the rain and the wet sounds of flesh tearing. Michael was gone, and he would never return. Morning came, but Michael never did. As the sky darkened again with heavy clouds, Sarah could no longer sit idly. Armed with a lantern and trembling hands, she ventured out into the stormy night. Rain poured down, drenching her as she called out for Michael, her voice lost in the thunder. Then, amidst the rain, she saw it. A shadow, huge and unnatural, emerged from the trees. Her blood ran cold as the monstrous figure came into view. The biggest wolf she had ever seen, its eyes glowing like embers, fangs dripping with fresh blood. This was no ordinary wolf. This was the beast that had been stalking them, growing bolder with each passing night. The smell of wet fur and iron filled the air as the wolf slowly circled her, snarling. Michael, she whispered, hoping beyond hope that somehow her husband was still out there. But there was no answer just the deep growl of the beast as it lunged at her. 
She barely managed to dive to the side, but the wolf was relentless, slashing her with its claws. Pain ripped through her as she screamed, but adrenaline kicked in. She grabbed a fallen branch and swung at the wolf, connecting with its side. The beast yelped, momentarily stunned, giving her a sliver of time to run. With every agonizing step, Sarah pushed herself forward, the cabin's faint light barely visible through the sheets of rain. Her body screamed in pain, deep bites, claw marks, and gashes oozed blood, mixing with the mud caked on her skin. Her vision blurred as the storm howled around her, and the monstrous growls of the wolf seemed to echo just behind her, chasing her, hungry for more. The beast had slashed her across her back, its teeth sinking into her leg. She could still feel its hot breath against her skin, and the sound of its claws scraping the ground as it stalked her. But she wasn't going to stop. She couldn't. Her only hope was to make it back to the cabin, her only sanctuary. The door was only a few feet away, but it felt like miles. Her legs wobbled beneath her, and her breath came in ragged gasps. The wolf was close now, so close she could almost feel it breathing down her neck. With one last burst of energy, she threw herself against the cabin door, her body slamming into the wood. She twisted the handle with trembling hands and stumbled inside, kicking the door shut behind her with the last ounce of strength she had left. The beast crashed against the door, snarling and scratching, its claws splintering the wood. Sarah screamed, her voice raw and desperate, but the door held, barely. She collapsed onto the floor, gasping for air, her vision going dark. The cabin seemed to spin around her as the sound of the storm and the wolf's growls faded into a distant hum. Her body, broken and exhausted, gave in. Everything went black. Sarah woke the next morning to an eerie stillness. Her body ached all over, the wounds throbbing with a dull, relentless pain. The storm had passed, leaving behind a heavy fog that clung to the trees outside the window. Her clothes were torn, dried blood covering her arms and legs, but she was alive. Somehow, she had survived. She sat up slowly, wincing as her back screamed in protest. Her head was pounding, and the cabin felt cold, almost deathly quiet. The memory of the night before came flooding back in flashes, the snarling wolf, the relentless chase, the terror that gripped her as she barely made it inside. But the beast, it was gone, for now. Sarah dragged herself to her feet, limping toward the small mirror on the wall. Her reflection was a mess, bruised, battered, and barely recognizable. But her eyes, they still burned with the will to survive. She wasn't safe yet though. She needed to leave this cursed place now. Every movement was painful as she gathered whatever she could find, her backpack, a few bottles of water, anything to keep herself going. She glanced out the window, the dense fog wrapping around the trees like a ghostly shroud. There was no sign of the wolf, but she knew it could still be out there lurking. The door creaked as she opened it cautiously, stepping outside into the cold, damp air. Her body protested with every step, but she kept moving, forcing herself to walk away from the cabin, away from the horror she had just barely escaped. As she limped down the trail, the forest remained eerily silent, no birds, no wind, not even the sound of her own footsteps seemed to break the heavy stillness. Her heart raced with every shadow, every movement in the corner of her eye. But the wolf didn't come. After what felt like hours, Sarah saw the road in the distance. Relief washed over her, though she knew she wasn't safe yet. But she had made it. She had survived. Yet, as she turned back to look one last time at the dark, fog-filled forest, she could have sworn she saw those same glowing eyes watching her from the trees. The beast hadn't given up. It was still out there, waiting for its next hunt, and Sarah knew she'd never be able to forget the terror that followed her home.